Hi there, this is just a quick tutorial in Cubase Pro 9. I'm going to show you today how to create your own custom key shortcuts. This is a feature that I've been using with Cubase for a little while now and it's sped up my workflow, it's improved my productivity. If you're familiar with Cubase already, you might be aware that there's it's a really powerful piece of software and it does so many things that all of these different processes that it does get lost within quite a lot of menus. You can see here if I click on this MIDI file, just this one MIDI file, there's so many different things that I can do to, to edit it, which is, which is great. But it means that I'm cycling through menus constantly when I want to create music, which for me, I'm not really a fan of. So by creating a custom key shortcut, I don't have to cycle through all those menus. I save loads of time and I get exactly what I need doing at the touch of a button. So I'm going to use this bass line that I programmed in Massive. I'm just going to play it for you. It's really basic. Um, it's just an example. And what I want to do is I want to save that as audio uh, so I can process it a little bit more, maybe put some filters on or um, twist it up, reverse it, um, just do stuff that I wouldn't normally be able to do to a MIDI uh, track. So if I go to File and this key commands bar here is, is what I'm after. This is like a list of all of the shortcuts for every different thing that you might possibly want to do within Cubase and as you can see there's loads of folders there's just so much you can do with it but specifically what I want to do is I want to use the render in place tool so I'm going to type render here and it's going to find here we go render in place and specifically the what I want it to do is I want to assign a key command to render with current settings and that's selected it for me already so I'm just going to go to typing key here this little black window I'm going to click on there and I'm going to put my shortcut in. Now, because Cubase already assigns key commands for letters, I can't just type any old letter in because it's going to do two things at once then. It's not going to overwrite it, it's just going to assign it to something that's already been assigned, which I don't really want to do. So what I found is that Cubase doesn't really use any keyboard shortcuts that have you holding down more than two or three keys at the same time. And a way around this is I've found that if I hold down Command, Alt and Shift, and then assign a key to it. It hasn't used anything with that type of command already. So I can pretty much assign any of the keys on the keypad along with those those other three keys held down at the same time. And I know that it's not going to conflict with anything that's already in place within Cubase. So for this process, render in place, render begins with R. I'm going to use Command Alt Shift and R. And by assigning those letters to it. I'm 99% confident that it's not going to have anything already assigned to those keys. So if I just hold those keys in, and if you're using a Windows computer, instead of using Command, you might want to use Control. It's totally up to you. You could use a different combination of keys if that works for you. See, I've typed in the key, and what I need to do now is I need to click this to assign it. And now that's assigned that key command to that process. So if I come out of here, if I hit OK, and now if I click on the MIDI pattern that I want to render out, and I hold my, my key commands in again that I've saved as, Shift, Command, Alt and R, it's going to render the file for me. Now I can process it a little bit more. If I wanted to, I could use the new sampler track and just drag that in there and twist it up even more. So yeah, that's just a really quick uh, shortcut. I use these key commands when I'm working through Cubase because I find it a little bit cumbersome and I just think that it improves your workflow and it makes finishing tracks a lot easier. Thanks a lot.